looking at the gem Psychic. And Psychic is a simple, efficient background processor for Ruby. Psychic integrates real nicely with Rails and Active Job, but it can also be used in Ruby without any kind of web framework. So let's say we have an application where we create a random user. And this random user goes through and performs some pretty heavy calculations that could take a while to reload on the client side. So if we click on create random user, you'll see that it runs through some pretty heavy calculations. It sends us back to our index action, and then we see our new user. But wouldn't it be nicer if we could just click create random user, have it take us right back to this page, and then all the heavy calculations are just done in the background. So within my user's controller, we have this create random action, which is what is creating our random user. You'll see that we are just generating the first name, last name, email address, saving the record, and then we sleep for two seconds. So ideally, we would want to extract all of this code into a background job. So we're just calling the background job, and then we are redirecting back to our root path. So to get started, we'll just add the sidekick gem to our gem file. Be sure to run button and restart your Rails application. And then under the config folder in the application.rb, we need to tell our Rails application that we'll be using Psychic as our background processor. So you can set a variable config.activejob.qadapter, and you can set this to the symbol Psychic. However, one issue that you may come into is, in your development environment, you may not necessarily want to use Psychic, have a Redis server up and running. Instead, you just want to perform the task asynchronously. So and say you could just put in some logic like this where you're checking if the Rails environment is production. If it is, then use the Psychic queue adapter. Otherwise, perform them asynchronously. And again, this is just so you don't have to have the Psychic service running within your development environment, and you also don't have to have a Redis server running in your development environment. So calling your background jobs asynchronously like this, it is still going to process the jobs, it's just not going to do them in the background like you would normally see with Psychic. Under the config, initializers, you can create a file called psychic.rb, and you can put some configuration settings within here. By default, psychic will try to connect to a Redis server on the localhost port 6379. However, you are able to override this, so in your production environment, you may be connecting to something like Elasticash on AWS or something similar. So if within your terminal you call rails generate job, and then generate random user, It'll create a file under your app, jobs, generate random user job.rb. And within here, we have a class. We'll set the queue as default. And the perform method is what will be called by our sidekick background processor. So here we have the same code from our controller. And this is all that we should need for our job. Back in our controller, we can call generate random user job and then perform later. So within the root of our Rails application, we can call sidekick. And this will start up the Psychic service. And in the background, I already had the Redis server up and running as well on my local host. So back with our application now, we can call create random user. This should take us right back to this page, but then it should also background process the creation of the random user. So you'll see it finish within two to three seconds. We can create several of these, and you'll see that it started a bunch of them, but then also finished around the same time. And Psychic also comes with a nice web UI that you're able to manage your jobs. So if you add require Psychic web, and then mount Psychic web to the Psychic, and you also can check the documentations on a secure system, how you can protect this so only administrators have access to your Psychic job. It's something as simple as wrapping this around a authenticate, and then passing a lambda to check if the user is an admin. So navigating our browser to our local host for Psychic, you'll now see that we have a whole bunch of jobs that are processed, a lot that have failed, none are currently running, and none have given up running. So you'll see that by default, we have a default queue, and when starting the Psychic service, you are able to create multiple queues. However, for maintainability, you probably want to keep your number of queues fairly simple, like maybe a low, medium, or high. So if you have any questions on how to use Psychic, I definitely recommend checking out the wiki on the GitHub page because it has a lot of examples and a lot of different scenarios. So one of the wiki pages is the best practices. And one of the important things to note is if you do something like this where you're setting a quote, 
you're just calling your model quote find, and then you're passing in the quote ID, and then you're passing the asynchronous request onto some worker, or within a active job, you have some worker dot perform later, and then you pass in the quote object. This is going to serialize and store the quote into Redis, and that's going to take up a bit of space on your Redis server. So it may be better to just pass in the quote ID like this, where you're calling some worker perform async, or if you're using active job perform later, and then pass in the quote ID. And then within your background process, you can call up the quote off of the quote ID and then perform your job. The second best practice is to make sure that your jobs are idempotent, which basically means that you can run the job over and over and over, yet it has no effect from the first time it was ran. So in a case like this, where you're making a charge for a card, you want to make sure that you're not emailing your user multiple times, because the nature of Psychic is that if a job fails for whatever reason, it's going to try it multiple times. You are able to set a setting to limit the number of retries, however, you still want to make sure that you have this item potency. And then you also want to embrace concurrency. So you want to avoid any kind of race conditions that could occur with your jobs running concurrently. So Psychic is designed for parallel execution. So design your job so that you can run lots of them in parallel. So you want to make sure that one job is not dependent on another job finishing in line because otherwise one job may finish before the other one and then you can run into some strange errors within your application. And another tip with Psychic about using Redis is that you want to make sure that if you are running Redis as a cache, as well as using it for your background queues, that you have two separate instances of Redis running. Because Redis, when used as a cache, is not really set as a persistent store, meaning that when your memory gets full, old keys are evicted out of the memory in room for new keys. And while that may be good for a caching system, it's not really good for a background processor because if you do start running out of memory and you have a lot of jobs queued up, you may find that your jobs just never execute because they're evicted from memory prior to being executed by Psychic. In the next few episodes, I'll show how you can deploy Psychic to a production environment so that it'll automatically start up whenever your Rails application starts and also how you can use Psychic for scheduled tasks. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.